everyone today we'll be discussing a very important question from git which is describe the mechanism of secretion of hydrochloric acid in the stomach what are the factors regulating acid secretion add a note on peptic ulcer so as we all know hydrochloric acid secretion it's an active process which means atp is required for the process it takes place in the canaliculi of parietal cells and the energy for this process is derived from oxidation of glucose this diagram shows the mechanism of formation of HCl and if you draw it in exam, trust me, they'll give you the full marks. They'll give you very good marks if you draw this and explain it, okay. So first, carbon dioxide from the extracellular fluid, carbon dioxide, it will go into the parietal cell and it combines with water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme to form carbonic acid. Okay, this carbonic acid is highly unstable. So, it again splits into bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ion. And this hydrogen ion goes into the canaliculi. And in extracellular fluid, that is blood, sodium chloride is present. Okay, and this sodium chloride splits into sodium and chloride ions. This chloride ion goes into the parietal cells and then it goes into the canaliculi. And this hydrogen and the chloride ions combine to form hydrochloric acid in the canaliculi. So, to compensate for this loss of chloride ions, the bicarbonate ion leaves the canaliculi and goes into the blood and combines with sodium to form sodium bicarbonate. Hope you all understood. And I have written it in words in the next slide and I will show it now. Carbon dioxide is derived from metabolic activities of the parietal cells. Don't get stressed. It's nothing but what I've taught you in the previous slide. It's given as words. It combines with water to form carbonic acid in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme. This carbonic anhydrase is, sorry, this carbonic acid is highly unstable and it splits into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion. Hydrogen is pumped actively into the canaliculi and chloride is also pumped actively into the canaliculi. And the chloride which is derived from sodium chloride in the blood. Now, hydrogen ion combines with chloride ion to form hydrochloric acid. To compensate the loss of chloride ions, bicarbonate ion from the parietal cells enters the blood and combines with sodium to form sodium bicarbonate. This is the equation. Carbon dioxide plus water plus NaCl gives HCl plus NaHCO3. And now, we learn the factors which stimulate and inhibits the secretion of HCl. The factors which stimulates are gastrin, histamine, vagal stimulation and acetylcholine. The inhibiting factors are secretin, gastric inhibitory polypeptide and peptide YY. And this is the word diagram for it. Acetylcholine, it binds to the M3 receptors and gastrin binds with the gastrin receptors. And these two increase the intracellular calcium which again increase, stimulates the protein kinases and which will in, stimulate hydrogen potassium ATPase and increase the synthesis of HCl and again histamine histamine also binds to the H2 receptor but it and instead of increasing the intracellular calcium it stimulates CAMP which is cyclic AMP this cyclic AMP again stimulates the protein kinases and this protein kinase again it will stimulate sodium sorry potassium hydrogen ATPase and increase HCl. Same goes for PGE2 and stomatostatin will inhibit CAMP. And the methods of study there are may four methods of study which are Pavlov's pouch, Hayden Hain pouch, Bickel pouch, and Sham feeding. And now we'll discuss about gastric function test. So first of all, what are function tests? Function test is nothing but the test which are used to assess the functions of a particular gland or an organ or something like that. Okay. So it is so gastric function test. We are usually measuring it in the interdigestive phases. Gastric function tests, they are performed to diagnose various gastric and duodenal abnormalities and to monitor the effectiveness of therapy. So, these are the various gastric function tests. First one is examination of gastric content, test for gastric acid secretion, test for pepsin, mucus and intrinsic factor, test for gastrin, visualization of interior of stomach, test for 
gastric motility and electrical activities obtaining biopsy from the suspected tissue so first one is gastric content the gastric content we are examining it to find the normal and abnormal constituents so there are certain parameters which we will look into for this test so first one is volume of the acid ph color acidity and presence of blood mucus and food particles first and we now we'll discuss about measurement of acid output so there are two types of acid outputs which are basal acid output and ma maximal acid output basal acid output so higher values of basal acid output it is found in duodenal ulcer zollinger ellison syndrome so first of all what is maximal acid output maximum quantity of acids that can be secreted by the stomach okay and higher values are found in pernicious anemia and gastric malignancy first now we'll see test for gastrin test for gastrin we are just seeing the serum gastrin level normally is 100 to 0 to 200 picogram is present high it is high in conditions like atropic gastritis zollinger ellison syndrome or gastrinoma and following surgery of stomach test for pepsin it is low in condition like tropic gastritis for intrinsic factor it is impaired in chronic atropic gastritis test for mucus it is decreased in hypertrophic gastritis now we'll discuss about peptic peptic ulcer peptic ulcer is nothing but an ulcer in the wall of stomach or duodenum caused by digestive action of the gastric juices and if the ulcer is found in stomach it is called gastric ulcer and if it's found in duodenum it is called duodenal ulcer and these are the barriers of stomach wall the four barriers are mucosa submucosa muscularis and serosa the innermost one is mucosa and the outermost one is serosa now we'll discuss the various causes of peptic ulcer first one is increased peptic activity due to excessive secretion of pepsin in gastric juice second one is hyperacidity of gastric juice reduce alkalinity of duodenal content decrease mucin content constant physical or emotional stress chronic inflammation of helicobacter pylori long term use of nsaids and food with excessive spice and the features of peptic ulcer are severe pain in the epigastric region in gastric ulcer pain you will have the pain when you are eating or drinking but in duodenal ulcer pain is felt 1 to 2 hours after food then nausea vomiting hematemesis what is hematemesis it's blood with blood and vomit and heartburn anorexia anorexia is you will not feel hunger loss of weight The treatment for peptic ulcer is first group of drugs are proton pump inhibitors. They are omeprazole, pantoprazole, H1 blockers which are ranitidine and cimetidine and sucralfate. Thank you. That's it guys. Hope you all understood.